Sweet. Okay. Um, now that you have your workspace all set up, we can actually get started. So in the lesson plan for Minecraft mod making, I believe they start out by having kids draw out a texture on a 3D cube that you print, and I've never done that personally, although I do think it could be interesting. Uh, it would help them understand that there are six sides to a cube, and they should think about their texture as going on those six sides, with the top, bottom, left, right, front, back, all that. Um, but I find cubes are boring. Uh, so whenever I get them, their workspace is set up as soon as we start. And then after they get it set up, I suggest that they make a tool. I will let them just play Minecraft, especially if it's younger kids. Uh, just have them play Minecraft. And you can do that by pressing this green play button right here. It says run client, and that will just run an instance of Minecraft updated to whatever it is. So this one is 1.18.2. Um, otherwise, yeah, just just have them to play Minecraft, but if they're gonna make something, they're gonna make a tool. So we're gonna do that right now. Uh, so this is the workspace. Um, it's, this is mod elements. If you click resources, this is where all your textures, models, sound files, structures, and screenshots will go. Really, you're mainly going to use the textures, I would assume. That's what I'm going to use. <laughs> okay, uh, variables. To be honest, I haven't used variables, localization, or remote workspace before. Uh, typically, you're in mod elements, and this is where all your little mods are going to go. So let's start out by making a tool. So I'm going to click tool. They're also going to want to click on all of these. They see something in here and they think it is easy to do. Some of them really are. Some of them I've never done. Um, I haven't done a villager trade or a key binding. Uh, so I don't know how bad those would be. Um, and they're gonna wanna create an armor. Don't let them create an armor this way. I'll talk about that later. Uh, but really just start out trying to direct them to make a tool. So let's enter the name of my tool. Let's call it Lightsaber. That's easy. That's a fun one. Create new tool. So for this Lightsaber, uh, the first page is visual. So let's make a texture. You're going to click Create Texture. And here, there's all these options. Uh, all of these options. Really, there's four. I always go to Transparency or Template. Transparency will just start with a base texture, 16 by 16, which is what you want for all normal Minecraft to fit like the Minecraft textures. Um, but I'm going to click Template. And what that will let us do is see all of these. So specifically after you click template you have to click this square and you will get to choose from this list you can also just use your scroll wheel um, of different like base textures and so you can take this like a wood texture and use a transparent brush over it and make it pink wood or whatever you want but because this is a lightsaber I'm gonna start with a stick just so I get like the shape of it and I may as well choose the monochrome okay and create Okay, that's not so bad. But let us just get drawn. I'm going to create another layer on here. And I'm going to call this a transparent layer. But I could do a template. Put like a little axe head at the top. But here, I'll click template. And then I'll leave it as blank. Great. And in this layer, let's make my color blue. It'll be a blue lightsaber. And I'm just going to draw. I think that looks pretty cool. Okay. For the handle, I'm going to do gray. You could do this in two different things and make a whole, um, make a set of textures that are different handles and make a set of textures that are different blades and 
have that be a mod. That could be cool. And let's use white. You have several tools over here that you can draw with. I'm going to drag this down so you can see all of them. This is like a secret little bar. It hides some of your tools. So move that. Um, there is the draw tool. This is just a pencil. This is a line. I don't use it too often, but it could be very useful if you're just trying to make like, well, what would a straight line look like in this line, in this way? Uh, that would be pretty good. I guess I could have made a line straight on through. Um, a shape. So this is like a square. You can also do circle, frame, ring. A frame will just be like a, a line on the outside. And then a ring is obviously a circle. And let's say you do this and you want to fill it. You can use this fill tool here and fill that up, fill that up. I could use a stamp. So I could take a texture, let's say that you make something and you could stamp it all over. I could stamp this, stamp that. Oh no, there's too many things. Let's do control Z and undo that and undo that. And I'm going to go back to the eraser. And this is an eraser. Hmm, there's a whole lot of stuff there. Let's make it bigger. That was huge. Sorry, there we go. And I'm just going to erase all that. So there are several tools you can use. And one of them is a color picker tool if you want to match a color specifically. But let's make this lightsaber pretty. Um, this will be the color in your offhand. I'm just going to do... Oh, I was in color picker. I do that a lot. So let's go. Click white. There we go. Bup, 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 bup. Hmm. That looks weird. Not a big fan of that. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to hue shade value. That's what HSV stands for. Or hue saturation. Saturation value. Um... And let us take transparency and make it mostly transparent. And let's see if we can make something kind of prettier. Let's try and get it more in the center. But I'm not going to care too much about where this goes because... It's just trying to give it some more, like, shape. With a lightsaber, this seems to turn out a little weird, I guess. But it's not so bad. Let's make this... It's parent, and we can give it sort of blue glow. Let's make it much lighter, too. So, saturation, yeah, we'll do a little less saturated, but nice and high there. And let's see if this looks a little better. There we go. Kind of looks like a glowing lightsaber, more or less. Maybe it's a little intense, but that doesn't really matter. We're just trying to get it. And I just want to show you guys some of the cool things you can do. So I usually like to use transparency a lot because it can give you textures that look much more like what you'll see from Minecraft itself. And there we go. And there's just a little bit of character to that. Um, it's not the prettiest thing ever, but it works. And so now, let's save this texture, and hey, there, it doesn't look so bad. Uh, now that this looks good, let's click Save This Texture. And let's say I want to name it Lightsaber Texture. Well, you can't do capitals, so it has to be all lowercase, and you can't do spaces either. Lightsaber Texture. So we have to make a texture, and this thing... Ooh, this is new. Before it would say what type it is, and there was only three things. So in this update, they've changed it from just saying block, item, or other to block, item, entity, effect, particle, screen, or other. Well, that is a whole lot. So really, you're mostly going to be doing blocks and items. Blocks are anything that can be placed in the world. So let's say that you made a set of stairs or something, or just a dirt block. Those are going to be block textures, and they map in a very specific way. Um, and, well, really, they look specific when they're in your hand, too. An item stays the same, so it'll just make a little, like, 3D version of this. We'll click Save This Texture, and here we go. So now I have my lightsaber, and I have the texture, at least. So I can just close that. Now that it doesn't say it's and it has the little PNG here, we know it's saved. So I'm going to close that, and I actually have to reapply it, so select. And I can check it to glow, that will just make it look like it is an enchanted item. Um, 
we want the normal model. We don't really want to touch any of these. Uh, you might want to touch this if you want it to look like it's enchanted, but special information, I haven't had to use this at all. So probably leave it blank. Okay, this window here, after visual, it's called properties, and it is very important. So this will let them change the in-game name. So maybe I have a whole bunch of lightsabers, so I could change it to blue lightsaber. And even though it's named lightsaber in the workspace, it will be named blue lightsaber to the player, and then I could make a green lightsaber, a red lightsaber, and so on. Um, and we're going to make it a sword. Actually, I'm going to click all of these will act like they do in the game. So a pickaxe will destroy rock well, an axe will destroy wood well, sword will have the special attacking type, um, spade will destroy dirt, and, and I haven't played, I think the fishing rod should fish, I've never actually made one um, in here. And the shears, I haven't made either, but those should be able to shear sheep and stuff. Special and multi-tool are different, so you can always press on these question marks and they will give you some amount of information and they'll take you to the wiki with their links. Um, so a multi-tool I think should be what we want, but let's just check. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I passed right by it. So special is a custom tool type. Basically, you choose what it will do. Okay, I guess I could look and see if I like that. Otherwise, I'll do a multi-tool. Um, and that does everything. So it's a lightsaber, and it can cut through everything. So I think it's kind of fun to make it a multi-tool. Because then it will destroy stone super fast, and it'll destroy everything super fast. Because a lightsaber can cut through everything. Um, otherwise, I would just make it a sword. Let's make it a multi-tool. And here... The creative inventory tab all tools will default go to tools even if you make a sword it will go to tools if they don't change this to combat you could also make it not go to the creative tab entry so it will not be just you'll have to use commands to get it or make a recipe harvest level you can do the question marks for what all these do that's what i do constantly so i'm not going to go through what every single one does um but this is just what level can it break it is a lightsaber. It can break anything, even, well, I guess it can't break bedrock, but we'll make it six just to ensure that it can break everything because the highest is four. So six will definitely, yes, yeah, five or larger. So I can do five. Um, efficiency, that is what? How fast the tool can mine. Very fast. It is a lightsaber. 20. Enchantability. Um... Sure, 80, we can make it really high. Attack speed, five. Damage, 30. No, that's probably too high, let's do 10. That'll be plenty high. Number of uses, it's a lightsaber, it lasts for a while, big battery, 1,000. Um, repair items, I could make this repairable with something. So that could be useful, let's say an amethyst crystal. Yeah, I'll do an amethyst cluster. You selected item. Blocks affected. Uh, is tool immune to fire? Does it crafting grid? Yeah, uh, we're going to leave all these. Triggers. This will be for procedures, which are the code. It is block coding, and we will talk about that later. But we have now made our lightsaber, so let us test it. So, to test it, we are going to want to, sometimes it says that uh, red button there. Oh, also something that's really important. When you have it open, you need to click save mod element. If you don't click this, it will not be added to your game. And here you can see it was red for a second. That means it is recompiling all your mods together. So just wait for that red to go away. And then the green play button will come up. Sometimes uh, you might have a question like, hey, why is there a red button? when I'm trying to play the game, like it won't let me join. Sometimes they already have it open and often you're just gonna want them to quit it and then reopen it because they probably opened it up 30 minutes ago and so they don't have any of the changes, any of the changes to their mods that they made. So now it is ready to go. I'm gonna click that green play button. It will take a while. You are doing mods. They will, the children often just 
like click everywhere, trying to open a whole bunch of things. Like, why is it taking so long? Just tell them to slow down and let it do its thing. It takes a while. We're making mods here. Um, I'm going to give this a name just so that they're not all called New World. So we're going to call it Tool Test and in Creative. Um, Okay, and this is my generation, my spawn. So, I'm gonna go press E to open my inventory, go to combat, because that's where I told it to go. Let's go to the very bottom, because your mods always go to the bottom. And here's my blue lightsaber. Like I said, it breaks everything. It kills everything. So, it should be nice and powerful. It seems to be a little laggy at the moment, but I believe that's just because I'm recording my screen. And let's see if it breaks stone real fast. Don't think that these count as stone? I don't know. But it sure breaks everything, huh? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That is not actually how it works. Uh, you have to go into survival <laughs> to test it. Game mode survival. Okay. Here we go. I was like, there we go. Now this breaks everything. Now I'm actually getting it. And I combine straight down into the center of the world with my overpowered sword. Nice. Okay. Well, I hope you learned how to make a sword. Or anything. Kind of looks like it's glowing. From the little things I did there. Or like there's glass on it. Okay. Sweet. Save and quit title. Close out. Often I'll just press the X, if I'm being honest. Uh, that might corrupt your worlds, but when you're just testing lots, I feel like it doesn't really matter if you have a corrupted world. You can just delete it. Okay. Quick game. Now, next we'll talk about making a recipe for it.